I've owned the Xbox One Pro controller for nearly two years now, and I have to say it is easily the best controller I've ever used. It's got by a mile the best build quality and general feel over any other controllers out there right now with its metal components, solid rubber, and of course swappable D-pads, analog sticks, and the paddles underneath. But I should hope it was such a brilliant controller because it costs a bloody lot. Anyway, the one gripe I've always had with this was that even with the Microsoft controller software that allows you to change lots of settings and button assignments etc on the controller, you could never rebind the paddles to unique keys. I always wanted to use those extra four paddles underneath for four completely different controls, basically adding four buttons onto the controller. But natively there is no way to do that. Stupidly it can only use the A, B, X or Y buttons, so for example you have your normal A button and then also one of the paddles can be A too. That's just dumb. So I've just never used the paddles, I've not found them useful. Until now. I ran into the software Remap, which has been around for a bit now, and it does exactly what I want. You can remap every single controller input, including those paddles, to any keyboard button. Now things are getting interesting. There are a number of games where you simply can't get enough controls onto your controller, and so you're kind of forced into using the keyboard and mouse when you don't want to, purely so you can access the full range of controls. Now you can stick those extra buttons onto your controller. So, ReWASD is an unbelievably simple program to use, and it is just a gorgeously clean looking program too. So, download it in the link below, and once installed, open it up. You'll be faced with this screen. Now, if your controller was already plugged in whilst you installed the program, just remove it and reconnect it, and the program should now detect it. In this view, you will, once you set up the profiles like I have, be able to see those created configs and which slot they apply to on the controller over here on the bottom right. The slot is referencing the switch on the center of the controller that allows you to switch between the first or second profile on the controller. If you want to edit any of these configs, just click one of them and it'll go straight to that setup and then you can just edit it there. If however you're new to this or you just want to create a new profile, hit add profile over on the left of this screen. Choose a name and you can even apply an image to that profile for a better look if you like. Now, regardless of which way you went, you'll be faced with this screen, either if you're editing or if it's a new config, it's the same thing. So if we want to change the paddles to a new key, we click the paddles button and use the drop down menu to select the paddle we want. Then in the rewised mapping drop down, choose the keyboard or mouse input of your choice. You can also just hit the key on your keyboard and it will automatically use that key. There is literally a ton of stuff you can choose from. Anything down to scrolling or web searches or waking the computer can be used. Anything is an option. Now the third drop down is the gamepad mapping. I unmapped this so that my inputs only did one thing. I didn't want to have any of them overlapping. Now once you've made all your changes, just hit the back button until you're back at that front page we were at earlier. Now you just want to select the slot with which you're going to apply this profile, so either one or two, and then hit save and apply, and boom, that's it. Give it a go by just going into Chrome or Word or whatever and just start hitting those paddles. The letters you matched up to those paddles will just start typing. I set my controller up to have slot one be the normal controller layout and slot two be my special controller layout, but thinking about it, of course I would be able to just take the paddles out when I didn't need them, so I wouldn't be able to click those inputs anyway, so I could, and I will, just assign two different custom profiles to each slot and it'll work perfectly, because unless I've got the paddles in I'm not going to be hitting those custom inputs anyway. Now this is all pretty cool, but you can go a step further, and this is when things get insane. Because you can assign a shift modifier key to one of the inputs on your controller, and this means that when you hold that input, say one of the paddles, all the inputs on your controller can now be something completely different. So the button A normally can act as button A, but hold the paddle with the shift modifier and then click the button A, and you could now instead be clicking the letter L on your keyboard. And you can take this even further because you can have up to four shift modifiers bound to the controller at once, so the best way I can think of using this is just to assign each paddle a shift modifier, and I find it much easier to use the controller like normal and just put a paddle each time you want to change to use a shift modifier. Now of course this is so overkill, and pretty much no one needs that many inputs, but the ability to have that functionality is epic. And for something like Star Citizen, I can see this being perfect. That game is nearly impossible to play on controller because of the sheer volume of controls needed, but with this software you can get all those controls onto your gamepad. 
You could also use those shift modifiers to split out the types of controls that you've set up. So for example, you could have all shift one modifier buttons to be related to, I don't know, fighting, and shift modifier twos to control flying or whatever. You get the point. Now for those of you unsure how to get this shift modifier working, in the edit section you'll see an add shift button. Just hit that, then for each shift modifier make sure you have an input that will activate that modifier. So any of the buttons on your controller. It doesn't have to be the paddles, I was just using them as an example. And then you can go ahead and change the rest of the inputs like normal. Bloody superb. What I also love is that there is a share ability on this, so you can share and download others control configurations. So for things like Star Citizen, you may already be able to just download a config that someone else has set up, which would make things a lot easier than setting it up yourself. And remember, you don't need to know what each button is set to, because when in game, as long as no inputs have the same keyboard button, you could just click the controller input that feels best for that game control if you want to change any, or you just click around with the controller like you would in any normal game so you can work out what each control does. Basically, I'm saying when you download a pre-made controller config, you don't need to go and find out what each input is bound to. Now, another thing to note, the remap feature can easily be turned off or on on the top of the program window. So if you want to turn it off, then just hit that button and it will disable all the edits you've made until you turn it back on. The controller basically just goes back to stock functionality. The software also seems to lag a little every so often. The mouse cursor just freezes momentarily at times, but it's a small point and you're not using the program for very long whilst you set it up. And once you've set it up, you don't need to reopen the program again. So it's not really an issue. I must say, I am so happy with this software. It's genuinely brought the controller up to perfection for me after it had been held back slightly by this one gripe for so long. Thanks, Rewise team. I should probably also note that this is not a sponsored video, I just loved the software and thought you guys would love to know about it too. Anyway, I hope this is helpful. For anything else techy, well really 21.9 specific unlike this video, head over to my channel page or the WAF website and I'm sure there'll be something of interest there. If not, then leave a comment down below with what you'd like to see and I'll try and cover it. And if you'd like to support the channel, the links to my Patreon page are in the description and Amazon affiliate links are there too. See you later.